This picture was photographed in combat zones by cameramen of the Mediterranean Allied Air Forces and by pilots of the 12th Air Force, who, during missions against the enemy, operated automatic cameras in their planes. Behind the pilot, shooting forward and back. Under the wing. In the wing, timed with the guns. In the wheel well. In the instrument panel, photographing the pilot himself. The commanding general of the United States Army Air Forces, General Carl Spots, has asked me to tell you something about this picture. I, uh, I don't think I could do any better than just to read from his telegram to me. Thunderbolt was made in 1944. That's ancient history. It was made about one fighter bomber group in the Italian campaign. It happens to be an American group. But the same story could well be told of the Royal Air Force groups which participated so gallantly in the same air offensive. As a matter of fact, the story belongs to all men who fought for freedom and did it a long way from home. Signed, Spots. Thank you. Italian man in the street, or what's left of the street, this is the fulfillment of a promise. The promise of the fascists to build a 20th century Roman Empire, conceived in tyranny and dedicated to the proposition that some men were meant to be slaves of other men. Special victims were the children. They saw things not meant for children's eyes. From the air, Italy is more remote. The airman never sees the face of the people, only the face of the country. From the air, you look down at the mountains. Look down and wonder how our men on the ground ever got through. Mountains and rivers. The Volturno, a lot of American blood in that one. Natural barriers. Made other campaigns tough too. Exhausted Hannibal's elephants, Caesar's legions. For the airmen, the ground war is remote. The only war you really understand is the air war. You can see a pattern to it. Lots of the country never been touched. Little towns that walk the ridges, like tightrope artists to keep from falling off. This one didn't matter. When something did matter, that was another story. This is how we changed the face of Italy from the air. Italian trains ran on time. Not these. This is what we did to the face of Italy. There's a story behind why we did it and how we did it. The story starts on an island, 60 miles off Italy's coast, the island of Corsica. Corsica. Rugged. Primitive, mountainous, malarial. Here they still remember a local boy who put Corsica on the map 150 years ago. This island part of France was liberated by the French in September 43. But you can still find a few Germans left by the wayside where they fell in the shadow of our airdromes. Alto Air Base, Sunday morning. Here, 
Sunday is like Monday. And Monday is like every other day in the week. A working day. Today, the missions are going out because in Italy, our armies have been stopped, cold, at the Gustav Line, across the narrowest and most mountainous part of the peninsula. U.S. 5th Army, British 8th Army, stopped for five months. At Anzio, a hundred thousand men sweating it out. We couldn't move. Stalemate. March 15th, we bombed Casino our immediate objective. Good job of bombing. Didn't work. Our infantry didn't advance. It was the wrong use of air power. Wrong because we were not taking advantage of the airplane's greatest asset, its ability to get behind the enemy. That's what the air planners wanted to do, get behind him. Lieutenant General Ira C. Aker, commanding all the air in the Mediterranean, British, French, and American. Major General John K. Cannon, Uncle Joe, commanding the 12th Air Force. And Brigadier General Gordon P. Seville, 12th Tactical Air Command, the brass upstairs who run the air war. They said, let's not hit him here. Let's hit him here. Let's isolate the battlefield. Let's weaken the entire German front by depriving it of supplies, fuel, food, ammunition, reinforcements. They call the plan Operation Strangle. This is what we want to do with airplanes. How? A lot of railroads in Italy. This is the enemy. Keep the trains from getting through. A lot of rivers in Italy and over 700 major bridges. We figured if a train came to one and it wasn't there, be kind of tough to get across. Medium bombers got many of the important ones, but bridges are long, narrow targets, difficult to hit and destroy. Took a lot of trips, bombs, planes, men. We started to use a special weapon. A fighter bomber, the P-47 Thunderbolt. One engine, one man, one bomb on each wing. Extra fuel tanks for range. Six fires crew chiefs taxi from the dispersal points to the end of the runway. Line up the squadron. All the pilots have to do is climb in and take them away. If you're a crew chief, you've got your own P-47. Sometimes you think of it as your personal airplane. The pilot's a fellow you lend it to every day. You let him fly around in it, and you expect him to bring it back in good condition. No bullet holes or flak holes. After you've been lending your airplane to one pilot for a long time, you get attached to him, too. If you're a pilot, no matter what your rank, or how many hours you've had. What counts here is the combat flying you've done. Unless you've done plenty, you're a beginner. You're called a sprog. And you remain a sprog until you're wise to the tricks of the trade. After you put a few missions behind you, you become a sport. Then with plenty of action, 50 or 60 missions, if you're still around, you're promoted. You become an old sport, a veteran. The big shots, like Gil Wyman, are called wheels. No one knows exactly why. This fellow's a wheel, too. Says so in his plane. Major Richard O. Hunziker of Tucson, Arizona. Got 179 missions. Your crew chief can't go along, so you always like to tell him what you're going to do. Got a triple threat mission today. Each section's going after a bridge. I'll come in on a course of about 40 degrees. Same old thing. Go out there and dodge around in the ack ack Dive bomb out of a left-hand turnabout and carry the bombs right on down. 
We're flying top cover on the other two sections while they bomb. And then we go in ourselves. Weather's supposed to be careful, so maybe we'll have a good show. <laughs> 